Hello learners, I'm Dr. Shabhangi Vaidya from the School of Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies. In this presentation, we shall be talking about sustainability in the context of human needs. We will specifically look at the theory of the psychologist Abraham Maslow, which has been extremely influential in many areas of inquiry, particularly psychology, education, and management studies. Human needs, wants and desires are seemingly unending and it is to fulfill these endless needs and wants that we are exploiting the finite resources of Mother Earth in an unsustainable way. This has brought us to the brink of a serious environmental and civilizational crisis. We have become more and more familiar and increasingly desensitized to the images of overflowing landfills, of plastic choked water bodies, of animals and birds and other species experiencing horrible pain and death due to the pollution created by one single species, the human species. The historic Brundtland Commission report of 1987, Our Common Future, which spelled out the meaning and contours of sustainable development, began with a very powerful and moving description of how Earth appears from space. I quote, In the middle of the 20th century, we saw our planet from space for the first time. From space, we see a small and fragile ball dominated not by human activity and edifice, but by a pattern of clouds, oceans, greenery and soils. Humanity's inability to fit its activities into that pattern is changing planetary systems fundamentally. Many such changes are accompanied by life-threatening hazards. This new reality from which there is no escape must be recognized and managed." Unquote. The world population in April 2020 stands at 7.8 billion persons. Widespread food insecurity, hunger, malnutrition are the harsh realities. Environmental degradation, misuse of resources by the haves and inequality between haves and have-nots is increasing. Consumerism, wasteful consumption and conspicuous consumption have become the pathways to social mobility. The explosion of social media has enhanced the urge of people to show off their lifestyles which have become markers of status and affluence. At this juncture, it is very important to remind ourselves of the famous saying, Earth provides for everyone's needs, not everyone's creed. The very well-known definition of sustainable development that was put forward is development that ensures that it meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It involves meeting the basic needs of all and making available the opportunity to fulfill aspirations for a better future. The Brundtland Commission believed that widespread poverty is no longer inevitable. Poverty eradication, therefore, is a prerequisite for sustainable development. And a world that has endemic poverty will always be prone to ecological and other catastrophes. The report also emphasized equity and just distribution of resources so that the poor get their fair share of the resources. Such equity would be aided by political systems that secure effective citizen participation in decision-making 
and by greater democracy in international de decision making. Sustainable global development requires that those who are more affluent adopt lifestyles within the planet's ecological means. In other words, while ensuring that basic human needs of all are met, wasteful and unsustainable consumption must also be controlled. This is the most effective way to ensure not just growth with equity and justice, but also a more harmonious world in which we are attuned to the environment, to each other, and to our own inner yearnings and aspirations towards self-realization. Let us now discuss Abraham Maslow's theory of needs, which actually mapped out these multiple levels of human needs and the various prerequisites that help humans achieve them. Abraham Maslow was an American psychologist who proposed his theory in his 1943 paper, A Theory of Human Motivation, in the Psychological Review. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a motivational theory in psychology comprising a five-tier model of human needs, often depicted as the different levels within a pyramid. The needs at the lowest level or the base of the pyramid must be satisfied before moving up to the higher levels. From the bottom level upwards, these needs are physiological needs, safety, love and belonging, esteem and self-actualization. Maslow said, it is quite true that man lives by bread alone when there is no bread. But what happens to man's desire when there is plenty of bread and when his belly is chronically filled? At once, other and higher needs emerge. And these, rather than physiological hungers, dominate the organism. And when these in turn are satisfied, Again, new and still higher needs emerge, and so on. This is what we mean by saying that the basic human needs are organized into a hierarchy of relative prepotency. Every person is capable and has the desire to move up the hierarchy towards a level of self-actualization. Unfortunately, progress is often disrupted by a failure to meet the lower level needs. Life experiences, including divorce, loss of a job, may cause an individual to fluctuate between different levels of the hierarchy. Therefore, not everyone will move through the hierarchy in a unidirectional manner, but may move back and forth between the different types of needs. Maslow stated that people are motivated to achieve certain needs and that some needs take precedence over others. Our most basic need is for physical survival and this will be the first thing that motivates our behavior. Once that level is fulfilled, the next level up is what motivates us, and so on. Physiological needs. Physiological needs are the basic needs for sustaining human life itself. Food, water, clothing, shelter, sleep, and sexual satisfaction are the physiological needs without which the people cannot survive. Unless and until these needs are met, the human body cannot function optimally. Maslow considered physiological needs the most important as all the other needs become secondary until these needs are met. Safety needs. Once an individual's physiological needs are satisfied, 
the needs for security and safety become important. People want to experience a degree of control, order and predictability in their lives. The social structures within which we live, the family, community and society help us to fulfill these needs. For instance, we feel safe in our homes, surrounded by our family members. Other social institutions like education, health, Medicare, law and order, etc. help to maintain safety and security. Emotional security, financial security, for example, employment, social welfare, freedom from fear, social stability, property, health and well-being all come under this level of the pyramid. The third level of human needs is social and involves feelings of belongingness. Human beings are fundamentally social beings and the need for interpersonal relations and to bond and engage with each other motivates our behavior. Giving and receiving love, trusting each other, acceptance, intimacy, friendship, belonging or affiliating to groups and being considered as valuable members of these groups is also a very important aspect of this need. Esteem needs are the fourth level in Maslow's hierarchy. These may be classified into two categories, self-esteem or esteem for one's own self and experiencing dignity, achievement, mastery and independence. And second, the desire for respect, prestige or reputation from others, for example, status and prestige. When we are recognized by others as worthy of esteem or respect, we also value or respect ourselves. Fifth, self-actualization needs. These are at the highest level in Maslow's hierarchy and refer to the realization of a person's potential, self-fulfillment and seeking personal growth and accomplishment. Maslow describes this level as the desire to accomplish everything that one can and to become the most that one can be. This need varies from person to person and cannot be generalized. One individual may see this need as being, say, an ideal wife or mother or father. Another may think in terms of intellectual or academic achievement or become well-known in one's field, business, sports, performing arts or any other field. For some, it may be expressed creatively in painting, pictures or inventions. More recently, cognitive, aesthetic and transcendence needs have also been added to Maslow's original five-stage model of hierarchy of needs. In order to achieve self-actualization, cognitive and aesthetic needs must also be fulfilled. The cognitive needs refer to knowledge, meaning, self-awareness, and these needs are the expression of the natural human need to learn, to explore, discover, and create a better understanding of the world around them. This need for self-actualization and learning, when not fulfilled, leads to confusion and identity crisis. Also, this is directly related to the need to explore or the openness to experience. Aesthetic needs refer to beauty, balance and form. Humans need beautiful imagery or something new and aesthetically pleasing 
to continue upwards towards self-actualization. Humans need to refresh themselves in the presence and beauty of nature while carefully absorbing and observing their surroundings to extract the beauty that the world has to offer. This need is a higher level need to relate in a beautiful way with the environment and leads to the beautiful feeling of intimacy with nature and everything beautiful. Transcendence needs mean helping others to self-actualize. Over the years, Maslow continued to refine and hone his theory. Regarding the structure of his hierarchy, Maslow proposed that the order in the hierarchy is not nearly as rigid as he may have implied in his earlier description. Needs might be flexible based on certain circumstances or individual differences. For example, he notes that for some individuals, the need for self-esteem is more important than the need for love. For others, the need for creative fulfillment may be even more important than the most basic needs. Maslow also pointed out that most behavior is multi-motivated and noted that any behavior tends to be determined by several or all of the basic needs simultaneously rather than by only one of them. Every person is capable and hence has the desire to move up the hierarchy towards a level of self-actualization. Unfortunately, sometimes our life experiences are such that we may not be able to achieve our higher level needs and fulfill our potential. Adverse circumstances such as poverty, loss of jobs, a personal tragedy such as loss of a family member, marital crisis, a bad illness, any of these may derail our life trajectory. Therefore, not everyone will move through the hierarchy in a unidirectional manner, but may move back and forth between the different types of needs. To sum up, we may say, human beings are motivated by a hierarchy of needs. Needs are organized in a hierarchy such that the more basic needs must be more or less met rather than all or none prior to the higher needs. The order of needs is not rigid but instead may be flexible based on external circumstances or individual differences. Most human behavior simultaneously is determined by more than one basic need. Hence, we can say that it is multi-motivational. How can we contextualize Maslow's theory of needs with sustainable development? According to this model, fulfillment of biological and physiological needs is the most fundamental aspect of development. The sustainable development should indeed address these with high priority, especially when the finite resources are substantially depleted or degraded. This consideration is quite important for India, where over 300 million people have no food security and about 700 million people do not have a balanced diet. For these people who have no guaranteed food security, to meet the biological and physiological needs, that is the basic level one needs, the safety, love, esteem and self-actualization needs are also impacted. Several sustainability science theorists on needs who have adopted Maslow's ideas to conflict theory, however perceive human needs in a different way, as an emergent collection of human development essentials. Furthermore, they contend that needs do not have a hierarchical, hierarchical order. Rather, needs are sought simultaneously in an intense and relentless manner. 
the needs theories proposed by different authors, consider the following as essential needs of humans. Safety and security, that is the need for structure, predictability, stability and freedom from fear and anxiety. Belongingness or love, the need to be accepted by others and to have strong personal ties with one's family, friends and identity groups. Self-esteem, the need to be recognized by oneself and others as strong, competent and capable. It also includes the need to know that one has some effect on his or her environment. Personal fulfillment, the need to reach one's potential in all areas of life. Identity, which goes beyond a psychological sense of belief. The human needs theorists define identity as a sense of self in relation to the outside world. Identity becomes a problem when one's identity is not recognized as legitimate or when it is considered inferior or threatened by others with different identifications. Cultural security, which is related to identity, the need for recognition of one's language, traditions, religion, cultural values, ideas and concepts. Freedom, which is the condition of having no physical, political or civil restraints, having the capacity to exercise choice in all aspects of one's life. Distributive justice, which is the need for fair allocation of resources among all members of a community. Participation, which is the need to be able to actively partake in and influence civil society. Arguments against the human needs approach center around many questions and uncertainty. Some of the questions are whether human needs are universal or cultural, whether some needs are more important and how to identify the unmet needs. The other major uncertainty is the distinction between needs and interests. Often the needs such as identity, security and freedom and interests, for example resource allocation, international boundaries, are both involved. Consequently, even if the needs of both parties get met, the conflict will probably not be resolved. Coming back to the theory of Maslow, the theory of Maslow has been debated, discussed, criticized and modified. But its fundamental premises about human needs being so multifaceted and especially the need for community and harmony in order to realize and actualize one's higher potential, continue to add value and relevance to our discussions about what it means to lead a meaningful and sustainable existence. Thank you.